they're doing it. They're all doing it. They don't care for watching. Trees are having sex right now. So you guessed it. Today on Kevin Outdoors, we're talking about the sexual reproduction of trees. Yes, another Kevin talking about trees video. If you came here for more on bears or, or gear reviews or dehydrated food, sorry you're out of luck, maybe next time. Uh, I think you're gonna find this one interesting though, so stick with me. Um, speaking of dehydrated food, my new book is almost out. Backcountry Eats um, is coming out very, very soon. I'm reviewing the final print-ready files this weekend. So uh, in a matter of weeks, you should be able to order a copy. More on that in the future. I'll certainly be making videos letting you know that it's available. So this is it. This is pollen. This grayish, yellowish dust is pollen. It's everywhere. It's on my barbecue. It's on my truck. It's, it's right now. It's everywhere. This is the, the season, um, end of May, early April is when uh, uh, the trees are putting out as much pollen as they possibly can. They're having sex essentially, and this is essentially tree sperm. What a wonderful thought. All of the hardwood trees in the boreal forest are angiosperms, meaning that they produce uh, flowers. They're a vascular plant that produces flowers. And unlike other uh, trees that we think of as producing flowers like apple trees or shrubs like uh, service berry or lilac. Um, those are all examples of insect pollination. So they produce very showy flowers. The uh, birch and aspen of the boreal forest are wind pollinators. So they produce flowers or flowering structures that aren't really that showy. Now conifers, like my friend the red pine here, are gymnosperms. They don't produce flowers, they produce cones. We'll, uh, we'll cover that some other time. So boreal hardwood trees like trembling aspen or birch uh, produce what's called a catkin. It's a flowering structure. It's actually a structure made up of a bunch of tiny flowers. And this is an example of the male flower. Last week there were tons of male flowers out. We had a frost, it's getting kind of late, and they're starting to drop from the trees. So on here, are a whole bunch of um, flowers producing pollen. And on this branch, I have an example of a female flower on a birch tree. Much smaller, much more condensed. And so this is, this is what's gonna receive the pollen. One thing I find really interesting about trees is they can be of one sex or two sex. Let, let me explain. Um, birch trees will have both the male flowering parts and the female flowering parts on the same tree. So the tree is what we call monoecious, of the same house, two, um, two sexes in the same house or on the same individual. So trembling aspen are quite different. You will find male trees and female trees and you, you will not find the sexual parts on the same tree, they, they will be separate. Um, they're gonna look an awful lot like a birch tree. I didn't climb uh, an aspen tree to, to get the flowering parts because it's, they're quite high and the flowering parts are at the very, very top. But at this time of year, you can actually still tell if an aspen tree is male or female. What happens is the trees that are female are going to put out um, their female flower parts first. They're going to put all their energy into that. They want to collect pollen and they don't want leaves getting in the way. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a resource thing, but also trying to expose those, those flower parts as much as possible to, to pollen. So you've only got about a two or three week window when you can actually do this, but uh, at this time of year in April or May, you can look at a hillside covered in aspen and you'll see, you'll notice that a few of them are not um, producing leaves. Those are gonna be the female trees. Another really interesting thing I find about aspen is that a tree can be female one year and male the next. Um, I don't know how they control this, but it seems that there's about maybe 10 or 15% of the population is female every year and the rest are males. So this is what's been going on in the boreal forest the last few weeks. These male trees have had their catkins out, they've elongated, um, and they're, they're open up to the, to the wind. The individual little flowers on them are, are producing pollen and that's being carried away by the wind. And hopefully um, they're trying to find the female flower. And the female flowers are out and open as well. They're a bit smaller, um, but they're open and trying to capture that pollen. So if a pollen grain lands here, it's gonna be absorbed into uh, one of these individual flowers and it's going to form a seed. The genetic material is going to combine, it'll form a seed. Um, over the summer this will uh, harden up a little bit 
and the seed will mature and in the fall the seed will be released. Both uh, birch and aspen make really, really tiny, very light seeds and have little tiny wings on them. And um, those will be released and picked up by the wind and they can be carried um, kilometers away. And that's what the tree is trying to do. It's trying to uh, reestablish itself, its, its species on a new site somewhere else. So both birch and aspen are really good at asexual reproduction. Um, birch are known for their root suckering. Um, often if you cut down a birch tree you'll get a clump of birch right on the same spot. And same thing with poplar, although it's not a, a stump sucker, they like to root sucker. So when you cut down a poplar stem, somewhere out from its roots, um, stems of new fresh poplar will emerge. And a lot of people see this as a very successful strategy and, and people discount how effective sexual reproduction can be for, uh, for these trees. But as a species, if you're focused only on uh, asexual reproduction, the, the root suckering and stump suckering, all you're going to be doing is recolonizing the same site. You're not going to be colonizing new sites at all. So sexual reproduction is really important for, for trees in the boreal forest. People think it, it's a long shot. It kind of is. Uh, the trees produce tons and tons of pollen. Most of it misses its mark, um, but, but a lot of it does. And when it does, an awful lot of seeds are produced. It's estimated that a, a single female aspen tree can produce 1.6 million seeds. So that's an awful lot of seeds. And uh, for sure, most of those seeds, when they get blown away, miss their mark as well. But some of them are going to hit. Some of them are going to find um, mineral soil to germinate on and, and get reestablished. So another thing to consider is that hardwood trees uh, in the boreal forest do tend to live a fairly long time. Not, not as long as trees in other biomes, but uh, a, an aspen tree can easily live to be 120, 130, sometimes 140 years of age. Over the course of that lifetime of that tree, it's going to have about 30 to 50 years of prime seed production. And uh, within that period of time, the landscape around the tree is going to change a lot. The boreal forest is prone to, to forest fires and blowdown events. And the seed that gets scattered from, from an aspen stand um, is eventually going to find a new target and allow for that species to, uh, to extend itself to a new area. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. As always, have a great day, and I hope you find some time to get outdoors.